Yes. Great. And I'll turn on here the recording. Well, namaste, my dear ones. I want to thank everyone uh, for joining today uh, for today's lecture about the Manita Muscaria. I'm very pleasantly um, surprised to see that more and more people on the island are being connected with such a strong spirit and having curiosity on how to work with it effectively. So um, my name is Vadim, uh, I'm a shaman, uh, come from Estonia and doing healing work for over 13 years. So uh, with the Manita Muscaria I worked ready for the last four years and um, yeah, and um, uh, many words can be shared on this topic. But before I start, I want to ask you, please raise your hand who has tried a Manita Muscaria already. Uh huh. Wonderful. And uh, so, if I raise your hand, who didn't? One, two, three, four. Beautiful. Very symbolic and a good balance. Seventy percent tried, thirty percent no. So, it will be a, an, an interesting question and answer section, and it will be an interesting flow of information. So, um, let's then uh, just start. In the beginning, I'll share some maybe words and stories. And uh, then in the second part, we're gonna go to the question and answer section, as for me, the most important that you would get that information which is valuable for you. Um, I will try uh, just to share what I think is generally important to know about the Manita Muscaria. And then afterwards, um, we will go exactly to the topics which is important for your development. Sounds good? Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. So, I especially made uh, a small plan so uh, to cover for you all of the interesting topics uh, which I think are important and uh, oh. and I would say here yeah, we will, uh, we will uh, go today oh, second. Mm -hmm. oh, gotcha oh well it seems I left the, the schedule there, the plan that I made. So I'll go from my head. Uh, so uh, uh, first of all, <clears throat> I'll share a little bit of my background so you would understand how eventually I came to Amanita. Uh, so I'm on my spiritual path for over 22 years already. And uh, I've studied a lot of different, let's say, knowledge. Starting my spiritual path started with Christianity. Then eventually it moved on uh, to Tibetan practices, then uh, to uh, old Vedic knowledge connected with uh, the ancient Indian books, uh, yoga, then eventually Tantra, and uh, all of this eventually guided me to my path as being the shaman and to work with uh, people in healing. So um, uh, it took me almost 10 years uh, from the moment that I started my shamanic path until Amanita invited me in. So 10 years I had to work, 10 years I had to travel all around the world, 10 years I had to visit so many different uh, teachers, shamans and keepers of knowledge, so eventually to find that medicine plant through which I can work with everyone. That was my request, to find that most perfect medicine plant with which you can work with everyone, it would be safe, it will be developing and it would be effective. So eventually 10 years of testing it took until Amanita allowed to approach it, her, him, call how you want. Uh, and um, mm, this connection was so profound um, that uh, after I understood uh, how Amanita works, um, my search stopped. <laughs> and now I have absolutely no interest even in trying uh, other types of medicine plants and etc simply because uh, if there is a plan that can give you all of the answers and it works effectively well for me it's enough uh, so Amanita by itself it's one of the most kind of mystical stories which is still not unfolded uh, especially in the Western culture this tradition is uh, one of the most ancient traditions in our human culture for using medicine plants uh, but, especially in the 20th century, it started already from the 17th, 18th century, they started to ban Amanita. Because Amanita, it, it is um, such an ancient strong spirit, uh, which can all easily awaken any human, which can give you uh, every human such energy and such strength that he will become self-efficient, self-independent, self and he won't be afraid to 
fight for his rights or for his privilege just to be who he is. So for eventually of that reason Amanita was banned as it was just a too strong healing, let's say tool, which was awakening people so much. And so uh, when you have Amanita, I don't want to say that you don't need other medicines, but uh, it's uh, such an unbelievable tool that it can uh, help you to heal yourself almost from anything. Why almost and how does it work? Well, I can go for, into the chemical structure of Amanita, which has more than 15 healing elements. Uh, but the most uh, interesting aspect is that um, mm, Amanita, its strength, it's not in the elements, but it's in the spirit that carries Amanita. So in a practical way, first of all, in Amanita, the most important component that has the impact on the brain, uh, it is Musumol. So Musumol is an element which has uh, an impact on the GABA receptors, the ones that connect our reptilian brain with our main part of the brain. Mm -hmm. It worked? It's not working. Uh, it's not? Oh well, I'll turn it on again. <coughs> so, and eventually, <coughs> uh, it's a very strong... Uh, uh, it's uh, one of the strongest tools uh, exactly of the Musumol element inside of it. So Musumol, it has an impact on the GABA receptors, uh, which connects our uh, main part of the brain with the reptilian one. Uh, and it is responsible that um, uh, the interaction or the impact from the reptilian brain lowers down. So why is this so important? And why does Samanita make such a big change inside of the consciousness of a human being? Because the majority of negative thoughts, of fears, of different type of addictions, uh, of uh, anything that is connected with animal instincts, it all comes from the reptilian brain. So if, uh, if we uh, lower down uh, the impact of the reptilian brain on the main part of the brain, we can finally become ourselves. So if, uh, majority of people um, uh, are not conscious enough simply because they don't have energy. Their avatars has a lack of energy and they don't take care of their physical, emotional and mental bodies. So when people start to use Samanita, just one of the sudden they start to feel uh, themselves or they start to feel themselves great. They start to feel their own power. They start to feel that they can control their life and program it. And this is why um, uh, when you use Amanita, it can bring such a big change uh, in a human life that it gives you energy and it lowers down the impact of the reptil reptilian brain, which means you as a soul can control your own avatar. So the main thing is, are you controlling your life? Are you controlling your body, your avatar? Or the, uh, let's say, avatar is controlling you. Uh, that your avatar, your body is just acting in a way that your soul doesn't want it to act. It is doing things that don't bring happiness to the soul. And maybe the body and the avatar are literally living a life they don't want to live. Because they have betrayed themselves such a long time ago for, that they don't remember what they want. So thanks uh, to Amanita, um, once uh, we start uh, to use it, we get control with our soul over our body. Thanks to this, uh, we can uh, really quickly uh, start to reprogram ourselves. Because uh, thanks to Amanita, it is also um, uh, has a capacity of um, uh, neuro programming. So this means that uh, thanks to Amanita, your flexibility inside of your brain cells and the control over your own mind, it expands. And you can change your patterns of behavior, you can change your habits, you can change yourself inside of your mind. Because uh, everything what we're experiencing, it's mostly the algorithms which are structured in inside of our brain. So if we have the opportunity to become a true programmer of our own brain, we can become truly the programmer of our own reality. So with Amanita, it works very interesting and simple as it gives energy and it has a spirit and it lowers down the impact of the reptilian brain, if you ask what you want, it will start to help you. So you can literally use Amanita Muscaria as a tool for reprogramming yourself, reprogramming your old habits, reprogramming your own traumas, just opening yourself newly 
to yourself in, in the way that you want to be. So why is this uh, so crucial and important? I'll make a little bit step to the side. Why the majority of people have lost themselves? Why so few people know um, the answer? Um, let's say very few people know the answer, what it means for them to be themselves. So uh, <laughs> raise your hand, who knows who he is and what it means for him to be himself. Uh -huh. One, two, three, and everybody. So <laughs> You, on the way. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I'll just focus on that one. Thank you. So, uh, eventually, uh, you see that we have here people who have dedicated so much time into their self-development, have de dedicated so much um, uh, in, uh, money and energy and uh, consciousness upon to discover who you truly are. Uh, so, and yet, even in such a developed uh, group, we have uh, just uh, two, three people who can say confidently that yes, I am. Who, I know who I am. I know what it means for me to be myself. And this is actually that power and strength uh, which uh, will allow you to become, uh, let's say, uh, to be fundamental in your path that nobody can push you over. So when we're small, we really, really know who we are. Uh, for me, it was uh, quite remarkable um, that um, uh, I found uh, pictures of my childhood and um, I had a friend who lived uh, over me. That was my first friend from the age of three and four. And on uh, in the kindergarten, we had like a costume party. And on this costume party, it was so shocking for me to see like uh, 30 years later that uh, me and my best friend we were dressed up as shamans and druids. <laughs> really <laughs> you know uh, that was so shocking for me but this uh, like uh, literally assisted me uh, just to see that in childhood we know who we are we know what is our path the path uh, is reflected through the games that we love to play if you will think about your childhood and you will remember the games that you love to play the most there is actually a very strong uh, path about the true essence of your soul because in childhood we just do what we love to do and then eventually in the society and the system it takes away from us uh, our time so when we're children we have the time just to play anything we want what does it mean i make the decision what i feel what i want so every child is constantly making an analysis what i want inside and he speaks it out and he starts to play it so when we get into the kindergarten school and etc what they take away, they take away our time and they take away our choice to make for ourselves. They tell us, no, now you cannot play that. No, you don't have no time. You have to sit here, you have to get your grades, you have to read this. If you want to get love and you want to get support from us, you have to <laughs> fulfill all of the rules, blah, 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 blah. So eventually in the spirit of time, we lose the touch with ourselves. We forget why I came here what I want, what are my true desires. And once we finish uh, school university, we actually start again, like newly, <laughs> like full noobs who totally don't know what they want, who totally like um, have so many programs inside of their head, uh, uh, how they should be. But eventually uh, very, very few keep the connection with their soul. And of that reason, only the most strongest people when they grow up in our modern times can be happy. Because uh, to be happy in the modern time, you really need to invest a lot of uh, time and energy into your self-development. You really have to restudy who you are. And uh, eventually of that reason, we see so many people who are, you know, kind of grumpy. Hello. Uh, but uh, so few people who can literally just be happy in their lives and are connected and are satisfied with what they have. So why is this story? Amanita, literally, uh, the most effective way on how you can use it is to connect Amanita with your soul. So try to keep in your mind that when you're working with Amanita, the most effective thing is to focus your consciousness upon your soul. If you don't know yet who you are, what is your purpose in life, what is your karma path, then focus on it. Discover who you are. Ask Amanita to make it clear 
about your presence here. What do you want to do? Which life, which actions, which adventures, which projects will bring to you the highest inspiration? The one that you will truly enjoy playing like you did when you were small in the courtyard with your friends. You remember how fun it was? Uh, I, for example, felt this um, uh, quite strongly in this song Kran. I so much love with the water. I was quite amazed how my inner child was happy about it. <laughs> so, um, and uh, there are the fundamental answers which uh, will bring the highest level of results. So why I point out the soul? So imagine that all of this, this is uh, just energy. We call it like matter, we call each other human, uh, but eventually it's all a specific type of energy. The only thing what is real in this reality, it's our soul. The rest is an illusion. You can believe it or not, but the rest is an illusion. The only thing what is real is your soul. In the same sequence, uh, you know, when the players are playing a computer game, uh, everybody knows that the computer game is not real. It's digital, it's fictional. That the characters there are just digital and they're made for the player. That in every computer game, it's made for the player. We understand it. Same way, this physical reality, which we call physical, it is purely made for the soul. The soul is the most important key in all of this puzzle of life. And if you get connected and have a clear connection with your soul, the rest will unfold. So if, uh, imagine, oh, raise your hand. Who knows such a game called Sims? Oh, very good. I see many girls raised up their hands, especially. <laughs> so. Uh, it, in Sims, it, it is quite interesting that there you kind of control the characters, but you don't control them until the end. You kind of create for them the environment, but what the p p character does inside of the game, it is still a little bit spontaneous. This is the same way how our soul is trying to control this body. It kind of has the control, but it doesn't. Because we have a brain. This brain is physical. This brain has its own programs, has its own algorithms, has its own structure. It has its own habits, it has its own patterns. And eventually the, through the brain or the soul can control this body. Or there can be other entities. There can be cultural and social programs. And eventually the soul or the player can lose the control over his own character. And then what happens? that when the player or our soul loses the control over its own character and avatar, it becomes sad. So let's try to imagine playing a game where you cannot control and you see that your character is doing some shit that you don't want to do. So eventually, what does the soul do and how does it work? So our soul is placed uh, through the physical body and uh, eventually, uh, or the soul has the control or the brain has the control. And uh, the more energy you have, the more easier you can control your own avatar. So for uh, putting it simple, if you want to lead a happy, fulfilling life, you need energy. At the same time, uh, you need uh, clearance inside of your head about where's the voice of your soul and where's the voice of your brain. And learn to transform your old habits uh, which are not corrected, connected with your true essence of your soul. And in this work and field, uh, exactly comes Samanita. The main difference of it compared with other, let's say, medicine plants, uh, compared with uh, magical mushrooms, uh, ayahuasca, peyote, or like uh, yopo, or many others. The main difference of uh, Amanita muscaria that uh, it has absolutely no psychedelic effects which means that when you use it, you don't have any impact in the change of your reality, especially uh, when you microdose. What you get, it's a boost of energy, a boost of clearance, and a very quick working mind. Thanks to which you can quickly solve anything what you desire and receive for that what you request. So for that reason, um, uh, it is uh, very effective uh, uh, to understand that Amanita Muscaria, it is um, kind of the most grounding tool of all that I have 
met in my practice that if you want to get connected with your soul if you want to be grounded and not flying somewhere there and if you want to have uh, success in this physical reality to be happy in this physical reality well this is the key because if your soul will be happy and you connect with your body the rest in your life will unfold so what happens by people and why people get sick so you remember where i shared you the story like in the computer game sims yeah that the character is just doing something what uh, the player doesn't want to do so what option does has the soul uh, to have the control over the body if it has its also kind of own free will uh, the soul first it sends pain pain that you would feel inside something discomforting that you would have a feeling that uh, tries to kind of push you to go into a different direction or to change your actions but as we were trained to think rather than to feel we think ah oh, that's bullshit everything is good i'll reach that goal and then i'll stop doing it or something so eventually we um uh, learned to manipulate and to put aside uh, the voice uh, of our soul then if we don't pay attention on the pain that we have inside the pain of the soul it still remains and it has an energetic vibration which has an impact on our body so you have heard that the eyes are the, uh, the mirror of the soul well I'll tell you the body is the mirror of the soul your body it is that instrument through which your soul is communicating with you and or you listen to it and you feel what you're sending yourself or you ignore yourself and you don't respect yourself and you don't uh, pay attention to the feelings inside and eventually if we don't pay attention on this pain it has the vibration which creates afterwards a sickness some were pain in the body so where the sickness appears there's an ancient knowledge it was as in the old Chinese medicine the same as better knowledge that every specific sickness has a connection not only with the physical body but also with an emotional body and mental body so when you want to heal yourself you have to know the whole picture not only why does uh, like the, the hear hurts or hear hurts or why did I have an accident that I hurt my arm or my leg? But to understand the root, the true root, why my soul <laughs> created this problem for me and what is trying to tell me. So once uh, you understand it, you can heal. But what happens if a person is not uh, paying attention to the pain and the sickness that appeared? That sickness with that pain energy it increases and then it transforms into a chronical sickness so a chronical sickness means that the person has for longer than five years ignored the voice of his soul which was telling him you're doing bullshit why are you doing this like why are you not respecting yourself why are you not loving yourself why are you doing the actions that you don't want to do why are you wasting my time why are you gathering the bad karma Yes, you're free, but I don't need this. I don't need more problems in my next reincarnation because uh, you are how you are. <laughs> so as a result, uh, the soul has the opportunity uh, to liquidate the body. So what happens if the chronic sickness still doesn't awaken the mind of the human or his consciousness? The soul simply just destroys the body. And uh, this happens uh, through an accident or through a deadly sickness. Every time when you meet a person who has a terrible sickness, well, just know he was for a very long time hating himself. He was a very long time betraying himself. And of that reason, now the soul just decided enough is enough. So if the avatar doesn't awake, then uh, the soul just kills it. Because uh, life, uh, it's only relatively important uh, for us as we're playing this game. But uh, for the big picture, nobody cares about death. Because after death comes again life. You get your next body. You get your next lesson. You get your next reincarnation. So that's why nobody cares uh, you know, between the spiritual people uh, just about one life. It's, all, it's really about remembering that all of this is just like a training 
you know, field for the soul. The only thing that is real is the soul, the same like in the game, the player. So in other words, the soul comes here alone and you will go away from here alone. Remember this. You came here alone, you will go away alone. You won't take away with you, not your body. You will not take away your family. You will not take away your richness. All what you will carry away, the same as a player at the computer game, is the experience that you got inside of this reincarnation. What did you learn? Did you get that experience which helped you to understand better your true godly nature? Or do you need some lessons? And everything is beautiful. <laughs> everything is beautiful. Uh, and in this, let's say, opportunity of reality, of which we call life, uh, the game is so free that, or you use your freedom, or somebody uses yours. There's no other way. Or you make a choice on what you want, how it will develop, or somebody more conscious will make the choice for you. Just remember that. If you don't make a choice, be confident somebody already made the choice for you. So for that reason, Amanita, it's one of the most um, fascinating tools what I personally uh, have discovered in the world for the connection with our soul. If you're just starting to work with Amanita, or if you have in your life those situations which you want to transform, well, first of all, let, make a clear connection with your soul. Understand what it wants. Understand and hear its pain. Like, listen to it. Ask the question, like, what do you want? Where's your pain? What do you want to change? Communicate with yourself. Focus on yourself. And you will find out the answer. And Amanita, it's truly magical because uh, it doesn't want, uh, like other medicine plants, to take away our consciousness and throw it around everything you know uh, I have met people who did like over 300 ayahuasca journeys and their one-time connection with the manita was stronger than all of the 300 journeys with ayahuasca of course ayahuasca it's uh, uh, let's say uh, it's also a medicine plant it also has uh, very big powers but generally it guides the consciousness outside of the body it's not connecting the soul, uh, the consciousness with the soul. That's why many people who go through ayahuasca ceremonies, in the beginning they're very inspired. They can be like, uh, in some points, feeling that they're special. But uh, have you seen, uh, did their life change strongly afterwards? Did they become more happy? Did they become m more, let's say, beautiful or successful? In majority of times, so when I meet people who work on only with, uh, let's say, such medicine plants, well, the many face challenges, but they don't think and analyze that it's from their experience with such medicine plants, which they don't know how to integrate into their lives, that they would bring a practical change. So for me, spirituality, the test of your spiritual knowledge is the reality that you live. That's the only way to test your spiritual knowledge. You want to test how good you are in understanding life? Show me your life. Well, all of us are sitting here, so everybody here are on a very, <laughs> let's say, good page. Uh, but in majority of time, this is the easiest way. Just look on the person, look at his reality. This is his spiritual knowledge, and it doesn't matter what he thinks. The reality is the reflection of his spiritual development. That's it. So if you want to test yourself on how much developed you are, just look at your reality. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you enjoying it? Or do you know the things which you don't like yet? Do you know exactly where you're heading? Do you know the vision of your most perfect reality which you could call heaven on earth? If not, I inspire you to do that. And to ask yourself the question, uh, what kind of reality do I want to have that uh, when somebody invites me to go to heaven, I say, no, my heaven is here. So in other words, we don't have to wait. We can make the choice now. 
and it's only about those people who focus on the desires of the soul and make a choice based on the request and the demands of the soul create in life something beautiful and unbelievable because only the soul like it can take away the energy and it can destroy the avatar or on the opposite it can send the energy it can heal the avatar so i have experience of helping people even to cure from cancer and uh, the main thing in allowing people to go out out of let's say the cancer mode it's focusing the consciousness of that human on that reality which the soul really enjoys in a very simple way that when a soul finds the hope they can get control over the body <laughs> was lost for such a long time and then that this body will eventually experience that what is valuable for the soul the soul sends energy to heal the body and on the opposite if the soul is not healed and you make a let's say operation like in the modern medicine you know the story is that majority of people still die from cancer after the operation I know people who had four five six operations the families sell apartments just to give them an operation and still people died because their souls were tired they didn't want to live here just their relatives were feeling afraid about their death and reincarnation their fear didn't allow the soul to let go and didn't allow to become awakened so that's why I have allow everybody just to go their path everybody is just perfectly there where they are if you think that this world is not perfect, don't try to look what is incorrect in the world. Try to look inside. Once you find connection with yourself, you'll see that the world is already perfect. In this perfection, everybody are where they need to be. Everyone's are experiencing that what they deserve. Everybody are going through that experience, which is important for their soul. And of that reason, um, once uh, you see that everything uh, has uh, a very deep meaning and that on the higher picture good and bad doesn't exist you will uh, mo with a higher confidence uh, move and use the powers that is given to you the power of choice and now uh, the easiest way on how to understand that you're making the right choices you need to feel happy inside that when you put yourself a goal, when you put yourself um, a project, when you put yourself a vision of your future, you need to feel inspired inside. You need to feel happy inside. You need to, um, like, remember kids. Yeah, when the kids are small, say, hey, you want to go to a country, to a water park there? And they're like, yeah. So this is exactly that reflection on how it should be. That when you imagine your future, the goals, the task, feel it. That you would enjoy it, that you would really want to be there. If you haven't yet made a vision of the reality where you really want to be, well, analyze again. Think again. Focus on your soul again. And the soul will always give you the answer if you ask it the questions. So in all of this work, Amanita is just one of the greatest allies as uh, it really makes the sound and the voice of your soul very loud and when you listen to it you can change many many things so um, uh, exactly with this effective work on how to work with our mind our consciousness so uh, uh, this for this I have organized and that was already like two years ago in Russian language such a course called Amanita Muscaria Diary and where I highly inspire and all, all people who are working with Amanita to lead a diary for themselves this is kind of very simple but such a fundamental effective tool on self-reflection and self-analysis that um, no words can <laughs> give uh, enough of a description how valuable it is and uh, just finding five six minutes a day in writing down how is your day went how you felt and what is your request can give you three four hundred percent more results from this one day <laughs> uh, than not doing it because uh, life goes and life repeats if you don't make conclusions
Have you noticed in your life that every time when you didn't make a conclusion from the problem, the problem repeats only bigger? And if you don't pay attention, then even more bigger. <laughs> and then eventually it just like ugh, hits you. So you would be lying down on the ground like, do you understand? It's like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so in other words, uh, life, uh, it is very wise. First, it tries to give the answer smoothly. It sends you a little bit feeling of discomfort and pain inside. Then if you don't listen to it, it creates kind of outside problems. Then if you ignore them, it sends you such strong problems that you will have no other choice than to stop and to deal with this issue. And until you won't deal with this issue, life won't develop. So enjoy, um, let's say the self-discovery, have respect to your own life, have respect to your own life experience analyze it you already have all of the answers but nobody taught us to analyze ourselves good enough so we would just make quicker the jumps we can uh, there's an option or living through the lessons or there's an option in understanding the lessons here so if you understand your lessons here inside of your consciousness you don't have to live them through in the physical form you understand how valuable it is you can transform all of your problems inside of, uh, in your life, inside of your head, once you made the conclusion and the understanding of the lesson, you don't have to live through this bullshit. This is how valuable consciousness is. So for the more you listen to yourself, the more you better understand, the more you can go smoother in your life. And uh, yeah, and in my opinion, uh, one of the highest skills uh, of our human, let's say, reality is the understanding of how you can create your own life just the way that you want it. And that the life that you're living, that it would be connected with all of the things that are important to your soul. This is truly the highest art form. <laughs> and um, in all of this, Amanita, it's a wonderful tool, it's a wonderful friend, which uh, all of us can use. So, these are a little bit some words and sayings about Amanita. There can be uh, many other things shared. And maybe I'll share one more thing. Uh, it's for all to understand and to analyze. It's, um, I touched a little bit the topic that um, uh, Amanita and uh, our soul plays through the physical body and that we have two more bodies and it's the emotional body and the mental body. So how can you mark it that right now when we're living our lives or what we can do, or we can feel what is happening in our physical body, yeah? Somebody pinched us and uh, we feel and we're fully present in the body. Or our consciousness can be in the emotional body. So when we're feeling strong emotions, we don't feel the physical body. We don't think, we're just in that emotional stance that we're experiencing. So that is the emotional body. And the third is the mental body. Mental, it's exactly the thinking process, the analysis, the past, the future, the imagination, the language, the logic. So for uh, when we're thinking, analyzing, and etc., you have, may notice that we don't feel our physical bodies. We don't feel usually emotions. We're literally just flying somewhere there. So this is the third body. Our soul plays through all of these three levels. So when you want to analyze yourself and transform yourself and take care of yourself, you have to work with all of the three bodies. Excuse me, there's a, there's a fourth body, it's the astral. That's the fourth one. Yes. It is open to only if you develop the three. That energetic body, it is closed if not the three are developed. Mm, but it's important to know that you have the astral body and through the astral you can change uh, yes, and there's also the fifth body, even the higher level body, and all of this it's, uh, uh, was written down 5,000 years ago in the Veda books. And uh, just uh, uh, if you don't learn to work with the three, there's, you cannot open uh, the fourth and the fifth one. So it has absolutely no point even to share about them. First, the most important is to at least understand how our health works, how our physical body works, our emotional body works and how our mental body. All of these three levels, uh, we need to take care of ourselves. 
So if you have in your life a feeling that you don't have enough of energy or enough of consciousness in understanding what is happening to you right now, just focus uh, on healing yourself and taking care of your physical, emotional and mental bodies. How to do it? Well, physical body. Give me examples. How can you take care of your physical body? Fasting. Oh, fasting, that's a high-end <laughs> practice. Yes, yes. What else? Good one. Eating healthy. Eating healthy. Do that's sports. Great. Uh, enjoy the sun. Going to nature. Uh-huh. Well, uh, even meditation and enjoying the nature, it even now goes more for the uh, emotional body. The physical body, it's exactly connected with the physics. So any type of walking or sports of yoga, anything connected with food, anything that is connected with true physical impact on the body, it brings us transformation and development. So this is one type of the habits that you need to focus on. You need to have in your life during the day the habits that will take care of your physical body, of your emotional body, and your mental body. So for the physical body, it's understood. The emotional body, please share. How can we take care of our emotional body? How can we show our self-love? Making it present for ourselves. Oh, very good. Present, very good. What else can we do? Express emotions. Express emotions, express feelings. Very good. Relationships. <laughs> Relationships, that is for sure. A spiritual development and support. Here goes very nicely meditation exactly here also for uh, uh, here goes everything what helps us to heal ourselves with love so everything that gives us uh, that energy of support and love it creates the biggest change so this is the emotional body and uh, now let's go for the mental body how do you think what is the how we can take care of our mental body Journaling. Yes, <laughs> and resting and uh, journaling. Yes, the mental body, it's our logic, is the clearance about our life, what is happening right now and where we're heading. If you have it, the clearance where you want to be. Everything is simple by you. If you haven't yet made a choice where you want to be, you're swimming <laughs> in the reality. And where the wind blows of reality, you will be shaken. So that's why on a mental level, on a, let's say, intellectual level, it is important to have clearance what I want. Clearance about who I am, about what it means for me to be myself. And uh, by working with all of these three bodies, you will eventually get so much energy and some such clearance that everything will heal. And you will have energy easily to manifest and to create in this reality anything what you want so the more let's say work through your physical emotion and mental bodies are the more energy you have and thanks to this energy you can materialize and create the reality that you want is it logical understandable cool so for uh, yeah uh, i can continue speaking on this topic for a very long time but uh, we can now for just uh, focus uh, on some uh, questions and answers um, and uh, I received some uh, questions uh, exactly in the uh, telegram and uh, maybe here I don't have internet but uh, Gunther maybe you can just can I just ask before something yeah. about what you said earlier. yes can of course come back to the definition for you what is the reptile brain uh -huh. in contrast to the soul and then the mm -hmm. consciousness the subconscious the unconscious what okay. is really so for the reptilian brain, um, uh, it plays a fundamental role uh, in the structure of the physical body. So for, we have actually not even three brains, but four parts of the brain. First part, it is connected with the spine brain. So for inside of our spine, mm -hmm, blessings. So inside of our spine, we have uh, the first type of the brain. Then uh, by the spine, all of the energy and the information goes up and the first part which decodes all of everything what is happening in the body is the reptilian brain. 
This reptilian brain, uh, it has inside of it all of the, uh, let's say, um, programs which is connected with animal instincts. So anger, fear, this uh, feeling of being a predator that you cannot trust nobody and that everybody tries to kill you or to steal from you. So all of uh, that, what belongs uh, uh, to the uncontrolled behavior of human, it's all connected with the reptilian brain. Uh, Can you place this as unconscious or subconscious? Uh, yeah, th this is more uh, subconscious because uh, like the reptilian brain in main function was especially in the old times that when there were some problems and the human needed to react fast to save the body uh, the reptilian brain was understanding will I give right now the energy or I won't get so in some way you can say that the reptilian brain is the one that decides Will I give the energy to the body or will I save the energy? So when you learn to work with uh, overcome the reptilian brain, you have the access to your natural energy. Natural energy means that you don't feel lazy. You don't have uh, inside of you those, uh, let's say, instincts uh, which limit down the consciousness in having an illusion that I don't have energy, I'm lazy, I'm tired. So all of this manipulation comes from the reptilian brain. Uh, isn't this part of like the human experience? <laughs> uh, this is a part of the mind. This is part of the physical kind of human experience, but it's not the soul. So imagine that the brain, it's kind of the place through which our soul can enter and have the connection with this physical world. If there would be no brain, we couldn't enter with our soul, these avatars, and to interact with each other in this physical reality. This brain creates this illusionary physical reality. That's why the brain is the main kind of uh, key where we can find the answers about the true structure of life. So everyone who went uh, deep into the study of life, in the beginning majority of, of people and scientists and who are really curious about life, they start to study reality. But then once you study enough of the reality, you understand that this is an illusion. Everything is created here. Everything what we call color, everything what we call senses, everything we call logic, everything what we see is just energetic neurons inside of our brain. What is the true reality? Well. Maybe you saw a little bit uh, the examples on how less a human sees with his eyes. Have you ever seen the spectrum that a human sees maybe like three and a half percent with the typical eye seeing of the reality that surrounds us? This is real. The true reality, it's far more beyond what the mind can comprehend and take. So going into the roots of how our soul controls the mind and how we can restructure our brain so to use it for our own effectiveness or if, uh, for our own reality this is truly a deep topic so if, uh, in a very simple way putting or your soul has programmed your brain and your brain is your ally and you're living the life that you really want to live or your brain as a tool was manipulated by other let's say yeah, structures systems or beings out of which you lost the control over your physical body you exist but you don't uh, let's say but you don't live you kind of fight but you don't enjoy you kind of look on your reality and having a lot of actions but there's no feeling of happiness and the results are coming very like badly or slow so our brain and the reptilian brain, they're very interesting. They played a very important role uh, to the point when we're living, let's say, in the nature. But from the moment when we, uh, let's say, started to live in cities and having more comfort, from this point on, uh, our consciousness and our soul start to play a far more important role. So for that reason, if the consciousness is developed and the soul has the control over the avatar, then the, even the physical processes inside of the body change. So nobody has a question that you can reprogram your phone or your computer, right? But when you ask, uh, can you reprogram your brain? And so 
this is the interesting thing that many love to give away their powers thinking that they're not in control over their own avatar. They would rather go to a doctor, listen to some kind of bullshit where they explain that you have no control over yourself and give away their powers or I would say give away the responsibility for own life and creation to somebody else. System, doctor, parents, teacher, blah blah blah. So the more we take in our true godly nature, the more we take in the responsibility of the powers that we have, the quicker the consciousness and the mind understand that it's always powerful in its own reality, the more easier it is to manifest, to transform and to do anything what you want. So that's why reptilian brain, it's an interesting part of us. Uh, and I would say it's one of the most interesting parts of the brain, which helps us to evolve, to understand that we're not an animal. There are people who like to associate themselves that humans are animals. You know why this is effective for the system? Because when, era, when a human sees all the time on the television or the news or like the films that humans are killing each other, that humans are acting like predators, that humans are just like our savages, as a result, this information disconnects us from each other. And rather than to follow our natural path in being like a social group, we become single where everybody are just even afraid to communicate, to ask questions and to discuss the topics which are truly important inside. And you know what's very funny for me is uh, that people were also educated um, uh, to think that uh, it's not normal to have voices inside of your head. You know, for there was a period of time when they were saying, if you are communicating with yourself inside of you, then you're schizophrenic. <laughs> but do you understand how stupid it is? <laughs> because Mm -hmm. that's uh, inside we're constantly having this dialogue between our brain and our soul we're always constantly having but because the society told us that's not normal and that you're sick if you have it people are afraid to discuss what is inside the big pharma created a lot of definitions to give drugs for every definition like schizophrenia and this and that just mm -hmm. to sell more drugs is to make billions uh, I support your words, um, who created and how created, well, with time we'll discover it. But for sure, who is benefiting, benefiting right now from all of this is the current medication system and mostly Big Pharma, who have like a capital over like trillions of euros every year on the health of people. So, and it's very, for people, convenient to hear, oh, I'm sick, I'm schizophrenic, that's it. Now I can uh, be act like bullshit. <laughs> I'm schizophrenic, you should forgive me. Or anytime when a person hears a diagnosis, he lets go of his responsibility of self-healing. And of that reason, I partly support when uh, people are visiting uh, like doctors. But at the same time, uh, I don't support when they're giving exact diagnosis. When a person receives a diagnosis, he can take away the responsibility for his life and put it on the diagnosis and through that again the person doesn't solve the problem the person says i'm sick <laughs> and uh, we create for them a belief mm -hmm. that he's sick now with this diagnosis which will create the problem deeper exactly so the diagnosis is more harmful for the person mm -hmm. if he believe it very strongly mm -hmm. like people that believe they will die from cancer in three months they usually die Mm -hmm. because they really believe. Absolutely. And I will share with you right now some examples from my practice about working with people and which results Amanita like brings. So um, I think, oh, a beautiful story. Right now came for a visit uh, to me, Sergey. He participated in Amanita Muskaya diary course in Russian language. And uh, he started his journey that was last year in 2021. I remember how he wrote me like a big letter with different questions and then at the end of the letter he wrote down that uh, uh, that in truth uh, he fell down from the 14th floor that happened like 12 years ago and uh, he survived but 
he is uh, just laying down in bed and he cannot move and he cannot do anything. So uh, he was asking uh, for some suggestions about uh, Manita Muscaria, well, asking for help. And we, uh, uh, for me, it was a very exact symbol because he was uh, my 48th participant. For me, like uh, number 48, it's my number. You know, every person has his number that if you see, it follows you in life. When you see it, then it goes by plan. So he was exactly 48. So I knew exactly <laughs> that the spirits have chosen him and sent me. So we started to work and uh, already in uh, one and a half months, he came to such a state of consciousness and level that he got up out of bed and he sat down on a wheelchair. He's got the confidence of starting to go out and eventually already uh, uh, two months after we started to work, he organized something what he was dreaming about all of his life. No, from the moment when it happened, is to travel to St. Petersburg. He was living in Moscow, all tied up to bed, and he was just dreaming to go to St. Petersburg for a visit because, well, it's a beautiful city. So when he organized, you know that? Like a person uh, was for, uh, so 12 years ago, he fell down, and then he had more accidents, and then he was laying in bed for five years, five years, and then less than one and a half months, and he's already, phew. well, uh, and you know the cool thing? Uh, he's right now here on the island. He right now is making his very first journey out of the country. And uh, like yesterday, we made a mushroom journey on trip a day. The day before that, we went swimming on the saps and he went for a swim in the ocean. And uh, he is building up the confidence and the understanding that he can eventually even heal his feet. So he's still in the mission? Yes. He, uh, he is right now uh, here on the island. He is living maybe Monday or Tuesday. So eventually and to, uh, tomorrow we're gonna have kind of our final such important session. So uh, this is just a reflection that a person fell down from the 14th floor who is like just laying in the bed uh, less than one and a half months he gets on the chair and so now he's traveling the world. And uh, I'll tell you of course his story will become big when he will finally stand up on his feet. Then that will be the whole cycle. So this is one of the stories. Uh, I got uh, yesterday a beautiful letter uh, from a girl who went with me such through individual guidance and she's a musician and uh, she was in quite a like kind of toxic relationship and she didn't know like does she want to stay she doesn't want to stay she was tired she, you know ups and downs uh, so eventually mm, she asked me for help I took her and uh, like, worked with her one one and a half months everything became clear she finally stopped thinking about the eyes out world and started to take care of herself to put her interest and feelings ahead she uh, and uh, she sent me a letter it's like a, a picture from her diary like uh, uh, Vadim said that I will meet my soul partner so quickly that I won't even blink my eye and uh, within like one week she met a guy uh, he was from Italy uh, they both met in Estonia and just uh, three days ago they married <laughs> so this was and it happened like chuk, 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 so exactly and so beautiful so uh, uh, another story have um, also a really good story about um, uh, Esteban he is uh, from Germany he uh, um, he's a let's say art person and a musician and uh, very talented but about 10 years ago, um, uh, he went into this uh, period of his life when everything started to crumble down. And eventually he got into depression, uh, where the psychiatrist called it a chronic depression. In other words, uh, even the psychiatrist told him, like, drink alcohol. That's a horrible suggestion that you can give. Yeah, that, that's how bad uh, his depression was that his psychiatrist told me to drink alcohol. So, for, and uh, eventually we started, uh, he wrote me um, and I took him in for the first uh, English um, Amanita Muscaria diary. 
and we started to work and in the beginning it was he was just sharing all of his problems it's like i have this i have that i don't know that i hate life i don't have energy so eventually he was just you know for sharing sharing and then it's like amanita doesn't work like one week two weeks three weeks then cycle passed by it's like i feel a little bit better but i'm not happy <laughs> but he didn't give up and then eventually when i was in switzerland he came uh, and as you understand, when a person is for 10 years in chronic depression, he's not working because he cannot work. So eventually he doesn't have the money and he still found the money by someone and he came to Switzerland from Germany to participate in the Christmas uh, uh, Manita Muscari ceremony. And even during the ceremony, he didn't experience much. The journey went really fast by him. And he was at the same time quite sad but he didn't give up. So eventually, um, he uh, two weeks after the ceremony, he asked me like, no, Vadim, I don't know what to do. I did the manita, I did the ceremony, I did that. Like I already stopped uh, the, uh, let's say the drugs and um, everything to take in, but still I don't feel happy. It's like, what to do? It's like, and here comes the topic of fasting. I told him, okay, now you have healed from this, now you have to clean your body so that the energy would flow and you will again feel the taste to life. To enjoy life, you need to have energy. If you use medications a lot for like many months, just know your body is filled with them and they have to go out. So he fasted for three days and after that, boom, such a letter where he wrote down that, uh, oh, I am back again i'm alive again i want to sing again i want to play the guitar i want to travel so right now he wrote me like today he's right now ready for almost one month in Tenerife, going uh, on an echo farm assisting his friends uh, in the let's say transformation and already there he introduced the manita i think to three four people for the page of development so when, this is a beautiful story. When a person you know, was for 10 years in chronic depression, he was under very hardcore medication, like he was under alcohol and etc. And it took him like three to four months to transform everything. You know, like everything. When before that, imagine 10 years, it's like a lifetime, like a lifetime. And here he's living again. So. The stories with uh, Amanita, they can like continue a lot. But in all of these stories, the most important, it's not Amanita Muscaria, but it's you and your consciousness. This is the important thing. Many like uh, to give away their powers upon you know, some authority. It's like, not I healed myself or like, Jesus healed me, Muhammad killed me, uh, healed me, or Amanita healed me. But it's you who healed yourself. Do you understand? Or you know which kind of powers you have over yourself and you use them and treat yourself with respect or you give away your powers, put it on an authority and give away your powers, not using them to change the reality where you want to live. So that's why uh, my main uh, also message to you, know that the Manita, it's an ally, it's a friend, but you're the true magic. Your mind, your soul, how everything is structured. This is the true magic. But thanks to Amanita, you just get this extra energy to see how powerful you are. But you're powerful without Amanita. But many people don't believe in their powers so please when you're working with Amanita remember you are the true power you are the one that creates it all and Amanita it's a friend who just supports us in showing how powerful we are mm -hmm. okay thank you this is for <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And now we're going to go then to question and answer uh, section. Mm -hmm. Sure, thank you. So, is Amanita good for children as well? Uh, this topic is uh, uh, very kind of partly like sensitive, 
uh, because in my opinion when the child is developing until he's developing under the age of let's say 18 or 20 it's a period of time when our brain is going through a natural evolution and form of transformation so during this time best of all is to allow the child to, uh, just to develop in its own natural way if he is healthy and everything allow him just to be in his own natural way and then after 18 and 20 it's a perfect time when you can start to introduce him to medicine plants then it will be uh, the most natural way of developing but if happens that the child is sick and there is such a let's say push out that he needs to take hardcore medications then of course switch the hardcore chemical medications for anything what you can from nature because all chemicals were made from nature just find that element in some nature let's say yeah, plants medicine plants uh, plants of power and amanita in the same way if you come to a point that the child is sick and you need to give him hard medications then yes give him rather amanita instead and now do it with uh, uh, a small dosage like you can go even from uh, zero to uh, and eventually just uh, allow uh, allow to do it for almost let's say one month but you just pay attention on the child you ask him how he is feeling you assist the child to make a request for healing and you have to know that your child is sick not because of him but because of you so if your child is sick the first thing what you have to pay attention is not on the child but on yourself so if you really want to assist your child to heal first thing what the uh, adult has to do is to analyze where's my inner conflict which came out which created this dynamic for the child because the child is just like a sponge it just sucks in everything what is around and uh, our brains they're like an antenna so we don't have to speak but what you feel inside this is what the child takes in and he becomes that so that's why with children it is uh, when they're sick it is more important to work with parents rather than to work with children the smaller they are the more work that uh, the parent has to do upon himself it's not a medical advisor yes <laughs> yeah it's not a medical advice it is uh, just the deeper understanding of the process what is happening when the child gets sick so when the parents really want for them to heal focus on yourself become happy destroy the conflict inside transform them and you'll see how quickly the child will heal very often a child likes to be sick only because he has a lack of love and attention from the parents so the child doesn't understand it but he wants the attention of the parent the parent is going to work to there to there and the child uh, he cannot even express that he wants to spend time with the parents so get, he gets just simply sick because maybe you remember when you were small when you become sick the parents finally find time for you <laughs> yes so um, this is uh, another aspect what you should uh, understand in uh, uh, let's say taking care of children and healing them that mostly what all they want is just attention love and support if you have and you are able to give it to yourself you know inside of you then your children will be healthy and you will have no issues on sharing this love attention to them but if you're not respecting yourself if you're not in harmony with yourself if you don't find time what is important for you then don't be surprised that your children are sick because you don't have it and you cannot give that essential what the child needs so again return back to yourself so i hope this answers the question the next one how about the dosage for kids well uh, as i said i would start from zero to and just uh, ask the child and how he feels uh, and eventually just increase the dosage i would uh, focus that the child uh, should request for healing and at the same time the parents need to also to microdose and ask also for healing it has to be parallel the child cannot heal if the parents will be sick Mm -hmm. 
please. When the parents are divorced and only one part will do this, will it still work? Of or? course. Yeah. You, you have to understand that the most important for the child, uh, it is, uh, in truth, it's a very interesting topic and it can be very long, like this term. You know that the term child literally appeared in the 20th century. Before that, children, as a term, they kind of didn't exist. From the age of four, five, six, they were already sent out to the field. Then they started to, to make a term as child, and they made it that the child is up to the age of 12. So up to the age of uh, 12, you cannot allow children to work in the fields. Then it increased till 14 years, then 16 years, 18 years. So now we're 18 years that is still considered to be a child. Uh, and what is interesting that uh, in the past, uh, this aspect of love the child, it was really lacking. There were many children, many dying, and there was not enough time for the parents to like, oh, you my lovely, <laughs> because they had many, many, many things. Uh, so eventually what the 20th century showed us that actually love plays a fundamental role in the evolution of the child. I'll repeat that the love of the child is very important for the evolution of the human mankind generally and the more love you give especially in the first seven years of his lifetime this creates his whole love like biochemistry his psychological love structure his patterns of behavior his attitude towards the world so uh, that's why yeah uh, it is important to give children that love what they need thanks to this love they will become confident in their powers they will uh, get that attitude that they will be independent and uh, they won't rely on the opinion of the system they will rely on what they feel inside so uh, uh, i think almost all of us were lacking from these words when we were small when our parents should have told us that you're the most important thing in my life you should think about yourself you should love yourself you should listen to yourself you should put your interests of your soul on first position and never betray yourself yeah, now it sounds so like, yes, true. <laughs> but did anybody get this worse from their parents? <laughs> and and so this is partly a reflection that uh, our cultures were put it into slavery. Slavery mindset. A slavery mindset is when a person, you know, the most effective slave is the one that thinks about the group. He doesn't care about himself. He only thinks about the group. He loves the group and he's afraid of the group at the same time. He's afraid that the group will push him out. <laughs> and as a result, uh, he always tries to, you know, be with everybody together. And as a result, uh, this slave, it is very com it's very complicated for him to jump out because he's afraid to be alone. Everybody taught him to value other people more than to value himself. Everybody taught him to value the laws and the, let's say, the principles that everybody has around rather than to trust himself. Just put mask for everyone. Yes. <laughs> and, and this, and especially uh, upon, um, let's say, all of the men, especially is done, the structure that the man would think about the family, the system, the work, the government, but almost... Uh, <laughs> Uh, to find a man who has learned to love himself and uh, has learned to be himself very less women and by you ladies you discuss a lot more this topic than men do this aspect of self-love self-respect you have a lot better work in this field by men it's really like a <laughs> taboo topic to discuss this so uh of this reason um, I hope this gives a little bit uh, deeper and better insight on this topic. So uh, if you want to take care of your children, take care of yourself and provide them that love what they need and they will grow up healthy. And if you see that your child is sick, don't think that he's sick, know that you're sick. And don't uh, put the responsibility of your sickness and your pain upon your child. That's irresponsible. And this is what majority of parents are doing. That's why the children don't heal. Because the parents are sick. If the parent is sick, the child won't be able to heal. Can I ask you yeah, please. You told us about this guy uh, who fell yeah. from 14th floor. Yeah. And he survived and he is now in, um, here on the island. So is he working on his like physical body, mental, mental body? 
Yes. Yes. So it's not only he's taking Am Amanita and so he It's he impossible. Works yeah, yeah. So he works on different levels and Of course. This is the only reason why he healed. Because if you want to heal, you have to he work on all of the three levels. And um, he shared that the biggest uh, like change in his life happened when he stopped focusing on the outside world and that during our work he finally focused on himself you understand like this is the whole secret that we don't give our consciousness energy to the stupid news to the stupid wars to the stupid economic crises to the stupid pandemics all of this is an illusion to distract your brain so you wouldn't think about yourself you would think about everything and everyone but you would forget the only thing that matters, you. And once uh, the consciousness of the person focuses again on himself, magic happens. Because now the energy is not going out, but it's going in. And the person is growing and he's healing. So yeah, uh, in other words, uh, he's doing a lot of work and the work pays off. And it will be very interesting to see how it will continue to unfold. Mm -hmm. And one more question here. Uh, what if Amanita uh, makes me angry and expands my mood? Thank you. So if Amanita makes you angry, it just means that you have inside of you a lot of anger. And anger, it's nothing bad. Did you notice that we're, we're being educated that anger is bad? You shouldn't be angry. You should be peaceful, you should obey, you shouldn't shout. But anger is just energy. Understand? Anger is just energy. And usually it comes from the soul, who is literally just, just shouting. They're like, what kind of bullshit are you doing? And the mind's like, no, shut up. Everything is good. I won't show. <laughs> and eventually, this uh, anger, it's always inside and it creates tension. And it doesn't matter, do you understand that you have this tension inside? Or uh, because if there is a conflict inside of you, your brain is always using a part of your energy to keep it suppressed somewhere in your psychic. And once you heal, once you find out where you were lying to yourself, you'll just see like, poof such energy comes out so you have to know that anger it's a very normal thing when you start to become awakened you start to become alive again you start to become yourself it's just the aspect of transforming this anger not into hate but into actions that this anger would focus you this energy on doing those actions which will transform your life that's it so of that reason when people start to take a manita you can tell them you will feel and you will see what your soul is feeling the anger that is rising inside of you this can be simply be that suppressed feeling which was for a long time inside but now it cannot hide now it starts to rise and when it's rising don't suppress it and don't throw it on other people, but find the solution, the practical solution, and focus the energy on the actions which will bring you the solution. So this is uh, especially a good uh, reflection for the man, that next time when you're very angry, like uh, don't shout, don't uh, explain, just do. Don't say anything, just do what you feel is the correct thing to do so you would get the results that you want as especially uh, uh, men uh, uh, as I told you are especially were slaved in in the mindset men are very bad uh, in expressing their anger there uh, because eventually if their anger comes out it's usually it's already in a, let's say in a uh, aggressive way when actually anger is just strong energy learn to value your feelings learn to value your anger just learn to understand what you want on where to focus this energy and then uh, every time when uh, anger arises inside of a person who is microdosing 
he can focus it on the right actions and get even faster results and change. So no meaning in shouting, just act on the things that you want to change. That's it. So that's from the group. <laughs> so please, uh, are there any questions that um, so as you know, I've done my first cycle and mm -hmm. um, the results were quite amazing for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, and now I will do a four week break. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, or my idea was like to just keep on doing the same work, you know, like mm -hmm. doing the diary. I mean, you still have Musimol inside of your body, but you can also use the greater spirit or something of else, course. right? Mm -hmm. So just keep on doing it. Yes, all of the habits connected uh, with leading a diary, uh, morning routines like rituals, um, all of these things are very valuable. So you would know for how, let's say, the most successful people in history, how did they come to that point? They literally just had the small habits on every day. If you repeat it every day, do you want or don't want, you're gonna come to big changes. So for, for example, if you write your diary every day, like uh, you get, um, mm, let's say, I write it like usually three to eight minutes. I have almost every time one A4 page. Like, so eventually when the year passes by, I take it in, I have like 200 pages at least, sometimes 300 pages of my own biography. I just open it and I can go through the whole year and just to see how my thoughts materialize here, how my requests were here. To achieve this, I had to go through this adventure. You know, it creates structure. Mm -hmm. Or the same way if you do every morning, like 15 minutes like yoga, even if you uh, become 1% uh, more flexible through this morning 15 minute routine, in a year, you'll become more than six, seven times more flexible. 1% a day will create uh, Actually, in mathematical progression, you'll become more than 35 times more flexible if you use this 1% for 350 days. When a practical way, let's just say at least six times, you can become more flexible, more physically stronger. You can take care of, um, you remember I told you, focus your habits on physical body, emotional body, mental body. So by creating the habits, you will every day get results, every day every day every day and then it doesn't matter what you think you will just see in one month huge changes it doesn't matter does the mind believe or not if you act you will get results so this is on what we focus the energy of amanita acting in the way that guide us there where we want to be so of course continue you're doing a great job you're going through big transformations and uh, it is very interesting and important for you especially now to continue and just give yourself time and that's it time helps to structure everything out mm -hmm. and uh, the lower importance you create the more quicker everything solves mm -hmm. so lower down the importance the energetic importance of the topic focus on yourself more mm -hmm. and just allow the magic to unfold mm -hmm. <laughs> please So mm -hmm. it can be microdosing, but also in a ceremonial way. And is it possible to combine as well those different ways? And how would you that? Mm -hmm. So if to speak about uh, higher dosages of Amanita, uh, if about ceremonies, uh, for, for example, the ceremonies and the work with higher dosages of Amanita, it's more, I would say, in organizing it, it's more complicated than to work with psilocybin mushrooms or ayahuasca or etc. So because if smaller dosages, they're not psychedelic, when you're using a high dosage, it's hallucinogenic. The difference between hallucinogenic and psychedelic, that in psychedelic, you understand you're in a psychedelic adventure, when in a hallucinogenic adventure, you don't understand it <laughs> at all. So we'll be right now sitting and I maybe like will turn away, come back and there's nobody here. And for the last one and a half hours, I was just speaking with myself and my imaginary <laughs> friends. And that would be a very positive story. <laughs> so 
for that reason exactly guiding uh, uh, ceremony with Amanita I only allow people who went through my dosing who have healed themselves at least on the first level because uh, Amanita can uh, guide unbelievably in the most smoothest way uh, at least how I try to do it that people will be just lying down and they would see everything like kind of in a dream but it's a dream of reality like we're right now sitting and we're feeling everything there Amanita can guide in the same way it will be like real reality you would experience it but it's a journey where you're just lying so for uh, the way how Amanita guides um, I have never seen any other medicine plant guide in such an unbelievable way and I have tried many medicines um, but Amanita is just like uh, that is from where comes the word magic from Amanita Muscaria there is like a historical path which guides us that the word like literally magic came from Amanita Muscaria in ancient times this is from where the unbelievable appears because uh, as I told you psychedelic you understand yeah that you're journeying and here you experience true magic where just you just see what you cannot see but still you see it and you're experiencing it in the whole way so of this reason um, uh, with ceremonies um, I inspire everybody to work more with microdosing because uh, the ceremony has to be definitely organized and be held by a person you know, people who know how to do it it's very important that uh, the person who is like the sitter or the shaman who is guiding it's very important that he would be a healed person because everything what is not worked through by the sitter it can be reflected and experienced by the person who is sitting so the person would have not his journey but the journey of the fears of the sitter mm -hmm. and uh, so and at the same time with uh, Manita Muscaria uh, it is very important to ask the right questions the questions which uh, will guide you to real results so for asking such questions which are about everything and nothing is the most <laughs> destructive thing what you can do towards yourself so when a person asks a question how is the world created what is the universe who is God <laughs> these are the most uh, dangerous questions to ask <laughs> because uh, they're about everything and about nothing even if you discover how does the world was created or how is the universe made or who is God or how is done it will be such transcendent information that it will be like totally useless here like totally useless it will bring not a single positive change to your reality you understand maybe even more confusion yes <laughs> uh, many people who have asked these questions and they got the journeys like they don't consume anything then until the rest of their lives they have big problems in coming back to humanity in discovering things about the true structure of life and understanding that all of this is kind of fake and there are many information which will create depression inside of the mind of a human who goes through it so of that reason the questions that you ask a manita there have to be practical practical connected with me which will help me to heal to develop to make the next step in the next two three months of my life the more practical you are the more beautiful Amanita guides you it likes to see or I ask you like this do you like to see changes by the people who you help or you like just to simply to help and nobody cares what are the changes by the human so all of us know uh, how uh, what it means to help other people and all of us know what it means to help when the person is not using the help that is given him that is feels disappointing right feels kind of empty the same way with Amanita like it wants to help and to see your happiness it wants to help to see the change in your lives it wants to help that you will become self-efficient independent confident strong it doesn't want to become how is it in english when you break your arm and you go like this the stick crush crush yeah it doesn't want to be your <laughs> crush it wants you to be free 
So that's why the more you take care of yourself, the more actions you do, and the more focused you are on the practical change, actually the more support and love you're going to get from Amanita. Amanita has the same principle as you do when you're helping other people. The best, uh, let's say, the most uh, enjoyable, let's say, the most enjoyable is to help people who are helping themselves. Or even such a practical example, of, um, you're driving on the highway and there's one car standing broken down and there's the second car standing broken down. In one car, the person, he's just uh, sitting inside of uh, his uh, like car and just like waiting for some kind of wonder to happen. And the other guy, he came out and he started to take his uh, like um, uh, his wheel or he started to push his car. So when somebody is pushing the car, <laughs> how do you think? Uh, to who would you like to help? To the person who is just sitting in his <laughs> car or the one who is already like pushing it? So keep this picture in mind when you're working with Amanita to understand who it loves to help the most and what you need to do so that you would get more support. I will, I will push my scooter all day long now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, everybody uh, um, likes to help the ones who help themselves because the person is ready in the process and it's so much enjoyable to give a little bit push that he would achieve what he is already wanting to have and to see his happiness, his results and the change, what he desires. So I hope this answers the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just, just um, would like to know like in terms of microdosing, yeah. is there one protocol for uh, all or does everybody have a different protocol in terms of regarding what are the questions, what are, what is the age, how is the physical body, the mental, the emotional body? Uh, generally, no. Like uh, this uh, 0.3, it's something what we have developed through our testing that was more than four years ago about the most optimal amount of Amanita per person when he's working. So this 0 0.3 grams is a perfect, um, let's say, amount for 80% of people. No matter of weight or... Yeah, it's like, a, yes, 80%. 10% of people are very sensitive. 10% of people are not sensitive at all. So if the person is sick or he has some kind of really reflective depression, traumas, pain, he needs more. And mostly it's in the beginning, in the first week when you can use more. Then the musumol has gathered inside of you and you can lower down the dosage. Because my inspiration when you uh, to work with uh, microdosing in such a way that you would feel your own power but you wouldn't feel the presence of Amanita. You know, some people like to have like a, a, a hit, a hit that they would feel that like, oh, it's present. But I inspire you not to do that, but to do, to microdose such a way that you would be always in your own power. So you wouldn't give away the understanding that you're healing yourself towards Amanita. So that's why microdosing, it's an amount which would be in the background, but you wouldn't feel it present. A dosage is already a, such an amount uh, that you would feel its presence. So from one gram, that's already a dosage. Micro dosage, like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and uh, a big dosage is already from five, six, and on. So uh, in the first week, you can uh, use more amanitas, uh, like if the person is realistic and has low sensitivity, you can even start with uh, half gram or one gram in the morning and one gram in the evening during like the first week if the person is like has strong pain uh, and then just to lower it down for normal uh, people uh, it's usually zero three once you made the, your one cycle month of microdosing then you don't need this information at all because you'll just see your own connection with Amanita and there is no rule how much you need you just feel it and that's it so of that reason uh, there is a general protocol which we created but the main creator is you 
how you feel. You want more, take more. You want less, take less. You forgot to take in your microdosing, well, maybe it means it's enough for you. If you take in and you taste that it doesn't taste to you, not like when you just usually start to microdose and you taste the mushroom, it's usually it's very tasty. After one month of microdosing, you might put the same mushroom, but it will lose its sweetness. It would become kind of, mm. that is exactly the reflection that it's enough. You have inside of you enough of mutsamal, enough of a manita, and you can move on into making your pause and seeing the results that you have achieved. What if after two months too, it still tastes delicious? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I recommend to follow your taste up to three months. <laughs> up to three months, yes. And afterwards, for sure, make a stop. But uh, there are people who were microdosing for <laughs> one half and two years in a row. And everything is totally cool by them. But to get the highest benefit and the dynamic, it's always important to make a pause. After you make a pause, it will be so interesting for you to approach this topic again. It's the same as, uh, well, who smoked weed, like when you make a pause and you then smoke the first joint, you always get a beautiful journey. The same as with magical mushrooms. You don't do it for a long time, you take it in, you get a beautiful journey. With a manita, you don't take for a long time. And then when you take it, you just see how you start to grow again. Because uh, your consciousness has stabilized itself where it is and it's ready for the next jump. So that's why um, I always inspire people to microdose one, two, three months based on how you feel. And after that, for sure, make a pause. And as I shared how you can understand when it's enough, you forget to microdose and it doesn't taste any more good. If it tastes good and you microdose every day and it's good, continue. <laughs> I'm on a break now after two months. Uh -huh. Now two weeks, two weeks break. Very good. So in two weeks, uh, try and be surprised. <laughs> Still two weeks. Uh -huh. <laughs> Can we do a meme like yeah. waiting for Manita? <laughs> cool. You, it's better to start parallel <laughs> everything. Uh -huh. First of all, when a person is sick, uh, he has to like sit down and uh, focus inside and ask his soul, why I'm sick? What is the pain? Why is the reason that you created the sickness? So if, uh, by asking this question, the healing will already start to unfold. So using Kamanita, asking the question and making the actions will of course make the process a lot smoother and better. So imagine that any sickness is usually suppressed energy, usually just suppressed energy. So the more quicker you give your attention towards this energy, the more you will like create impact on it, the more quicker it will allow to transform, to get outside and the healing will start to happen. So if you want to heal faster, it's very good to know your sickness. You can also some uh, check uh, actually, in English, I haven't found like good websites, but in Ayurveda and Chinese ancient knowledge, you can write down the sickness and you can get the comments what is not only the physical pain, but what is the conflict on the emotional body and mental bodies. So, and once you know clearly with which conflict it's connected, then you can focus again your consciousness in solving this conflict inside of you. Once this conflict is solved and the soul becomes happy inside, everything starts to change. So we approach from multiple levels. It's good to focus your consciousness, it's good to use some Anita and to ask for support, it's good to start to work with your physical, emotional, mental bodies. And by combining all of this, you can get really quick results in healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's any specific sickness, you can afterwards uh, just let me know, <laughs> and, uh, share. Bless you. <laughs> and I can share with you the insights uh, what does the Ayurveda knowledge uh, speak about this exactly topic.
what are the conflicts on the emotional body and on the mental bodies. Mm -hmm. Please. Do you use only dried manuka or also like in tea? Mm -hmm. So if it's uh, if I'm gathering kamanita, I eat it fresh. Yes. I. Well, when uh, I'm gathering, let's say, amanitas, uh, I usually gather the caps, but the stems, I just eat them like this. I usually, uh, yeah, so when I'm... It's not. Like, people like to speak about this ibotenic acid, that it's so scary and etc. But uh, in truth, the amount of it is so less in amanita that it's uh, it has almost no impact. Like... Uh, the deadly no dosage of um, uh, fresh Amanita muscaria, it's over 15 kilograms. <laughs> 15 kilos of fresh Amanita in you will throw up until you eat this food. Exactly. You can drink, uh, a person might drink 800 milliliters of vodka on an empty stomach and die from that. From salt, he needs to eat like 4 kilos of salt. <laughs> and here, so, uh, the ibotenic acid. Uh, it would be interesting if you eat 10 kilograms of, of Amanita and not die. <laughs> <laughs> on a journey. <laughs> on a journey. Oh. <laughs> that's a, that will be die an adventure. You hallucinate that you're like on the beach, but you're actually on the highway. You <laughs> <laughs> will die. <laughs> yeah, you die for different reasons. Well, uh, I assume. Um, compared to other psychedelics, like I have met people who consumed, like for example, 1,000 or 1,500 milliliters of LSD. And at one time I met a person, he is a healer, uh, he lives now in India, and uh, at the age of 24 or 25, uh, by accident, he consumed uh, 12,500 milliliters of LSD. Come on. It's a whole bottle of LSD. A whole, yes. He, he, uh, so 1.2 gram. So, well, he, yeah, he's a healer. So he had, um, like, session. He lived, uh, like, in Britain. And after the healing session or massage, he had holy water. Mm. And next to it, he had LSD. Mm. And so, by accident, he took after the massage, not the holy water, but the LSD. And once he just holy took... Shit. Yes. <laughs> once he did it, it was just, he couldn't do nothing. He just understood that he has to go through it. For one week. One week? Well, it was Maybe of course, uh, it was of course a very complex, uh, in some parts, journey. Uh, it lasted, uh, let's say, more than three days uh, in a very dynamic, dynamic way. Eventually, uh, he still, when he closes his eyes, he sees uh, everything white. So darkness disappeared in his consciousness fully. Uh, and at the same time, the only thing what assisted him to go through it, uh, go through this experience, he took uh, a white sheet from the bed, put it, and just was laying just on purely on this white sheet of blanket, pure white. And there he just like, because this white, this purity allowed him to be connected with his soul and just go through it in a spiritual way and yes and he's a great healer right now he does sound healing and uh, he does work internationally and especially he loves to work in Goa in the north part doing night uh, like gong sessions so this is a, a very practical real story <laughs> and uh, this is uh, just a, a reflection with even a chemical yeah substance LSD is not natural. It was made as a copy from, uh, like, uh, from plants. With plant-based medicine, now I believe it's even more simple, because every plant has its own spirit, and you can ask them for guidance. And if you eat a big amount, if you ask for guidance, well, they will guide. With LSD and chemistry, you cannot do that. You're by yourself. How much you ate, so much you will live it through. But with uh, uh, plant medicines, which have a spirit, you can negotiate. Yeah. And the you can... The chemicals, they are too extreme on the mm -hmm. body. And it's like, it's not a... Like, plant medicines are more natural than dissolved mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. 
and with chemicals it's all up to your own consciousness on how much you can like control yourself and focus this energy with plant medicine you can relax just ask sincerely and let them guide but i don't recommend to eat 10 kilos of amanita <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in which case would you advise someone not to do it? Uh, not to microdose. Yeah. Uh, well, if, uh, if the person is happy, healthy, and everything is good in his life. <laughs> Pregnancy and schizophrenia. Ah, about? yeah. If to speak about uh, more specific, then uh, when uh, women are pregnant, like uh, in these cases, I recommend highly to approach any medicine plants carefully. So when, the, uh, uh, when a woman is pregnant, moment the baby is there he's already taking in all of the experience uh, that the woman is going through and uh, even when uh, let's say the mother is taking a pill or drinking coffee or alcohol all of this is streamed to the baby and he already starts to change For that reason i highly recommend that during pregnancy the same as when a child is growing up it's best of all well, not to use anything and allow it to let's say uh, the, uh, the child and the mother to go in a natural way of development. If there are some extreme parts, then you can use like Amanita, but especially as for guidance. And also it's an important thing. Uh, well, you know that pregnancy, it's a very deep and complex topic because uh, there's also an aspect of the woman consciousness. Does she want the child or no? Because uh, you know that uh, the body can just push out the baby without allowing it to develop and grow more. So for uh, here, this aspect on uh, how it is, there it just might happen. To, no, I'm just sharing how it can be. Like if the child is wanted, and uh, then the child, of course, he will be born. But when the woman doesn't want the child uh, and uh, she is like struggling. And for example, um, uh, she's afraid for herself to admit that she doesn't want the child. So what the manita can do that the soul will see, I don't want the child. And eventually the body will let's say, no, it's okay. Like, I don't want the child. On the other hand, when the woman truly wants the child, then a manita can support and very strongly help that during the birth and everything it will go very smooth, very nice, that the child would be healthy. So this topic, it still remains um, a little bit, um, you know, uh, under, the, yeah, it, it is still a topic to study, uh, but I hope my position is understandable. Truly pay attention on the case of the woman who, you know, like what is she going through? Everybody is individual. So that's why there's no general rule, especially during pregnancy. Of course, I have advised some people to use Amanita and some people advise not to use Amanita during pregnancy. It's every time, like, mm. depends. You have what to analyze. The depression after birth, is this Good. phenomenon? Yeah, like depression after birth, uh, already, let's say from uh, that moment, uh, it's already, you can use Amanita more and more. But uh, as I told you, breastfeeding. exactly, mm -hmm. that with the breastfeeding that, uh, uh, like with breastfeeding, of course, it's already uh, happens more smoother. When the baby is already out of the wound, uh, womb, it's not already such a strong impact uh, on the body. So again, um, uh, from my, my opinion and experience, uh, yes, you can use a manita and other medicine plants um, uh, for like taking care if there's deep depression and the woman is about to take uh, antidepressants. Which is much worse. Yes, and opioids. So if the woman uh, is at that stage that she's about to put such chemistry inside, of course, use lion's mane, use amanita, use cordyceps, use chaga, like use natural medicine plants and they will support, they will give the energy. And when there's energy, it's easy to overcome depression. Uh, but if nothing is critical if the woman uh, uh, not say if the person is like okay with overcoming by itself better not to use it simply because it's also part of the evolution when you're going through it by yourself so every time it's very such specific and the second uh, also uh, topic with who for who Amanita maybe it's not uh, let's say you have to approach it in the same way careful 
is for people with schizophrenia for people who have in their past in their families people who have schizophrenia uh, which means uh, that their psychic gets more and as a result uh, such people have to be guided profoundly you know for them you really need to take them by the hand and like go with them like this if you don't do that it's better not to advise people uh, to use Amanita because um, uh, what it can open uh, who knows especially if the person had a lot of suppressed feelings emotions and the past it's better just allow him uh, or her uh, not to get the support to understand that changes will happen things will come out a lot of feelings emotions and etc Mm -hmm. Some people miss the diagnosis with uh, schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. Like the doctors tell them they're schizophrenic, but they're not ready. Uh, so uh, yes, that be, happens. Yeah. So as I told you, approach them individually. I highly recommend uh, when you're speaking with people and they tell you, I have such a diagnosis. Uh, I would always say, well, uh, you're not that diagnosis. Yeah. You're not. You're just going through a process of transformation. And once you understand the lesson, you'll become more stronger, more healthy, more evolved. Uh, so that's why here yeah, for me, when I hear that the person tells me that I have a diagnosis, uh, I hear, uh, I have, uh, how's it called? Um, I have an excuse. This is what I hear when a person says, I have a diagnosis. He just tells me, I have an excuse why I'm like this and uh, for this reason I don't want to work upon myself I don't believe I can heal I'm just shitty I stink and you have to take me in because the doctor told me I stink and I'm filled with shit so that's why close to me there's no people who have diagnosis <laughs> because all of them have healed and who wants to be sick please go and be sick everybody has their own choice mm -hmm. uh, Okay, one by one. You were first. Yeah, so um, again, coming back to how you use it, mm -hmm. because uh, you say the style of the draft. I, I, um, I picked a lot last autumn this season, and mm -hmm. I, I dried it most of it, mm -hmm. and I, I looked at all kinds of past what's not. And also, there was this uh, okay, after drying, boiling. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's much, much, much more effective. Uh, this aspect of making tea from Amanita Muscaria, I would say it mostly comes from US. Because in US, uh, there the people got the information that the only way how you consume Amanita uh, that it has a botanic acid the only way how you can do it is to boil it and you have to and you have to boil it with uh, like lemon and etc so uh, this is uh, purely a story about uh, let's say the american way uh, but uh, right now uh, from a practical sense you can even understand yourself that when you dry them the uh, ibotenic acid it becomes musimol so it transforms yes but if you dry them correctly you dry them you put them in a vacuum you put them into a dark place so then this process happens so once you dry them the dry ones doesn't have any botanic acid because okay this is very different in the condition yes. that i have mm -hmm. Yes, then yes. You uh, more. Mm -hmm. But also, I understand that different what kind of uh, nervous system you have, and it can be good to have the other than the acid, mm -hmm. and it can be good to have the muscle. Mm -hmm. So this is like a very different information for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I have a very short sleep, so 
Well, uh, uh, all I can say uh, they have tried different ways, and uh, you can as uh, boil it. Uh, no, like there's like three main types of preparing kamanita. Well, one way is you boil it, fresh ones. You boil like two times by ten minutes. Uh, then the red substance what you get it has the musumol and the psycho no let's say psychoactive substances and on the other side you just have the mushroom which is white and you can like if you fry it with uh, butter it will like, taste like chicken uh, so uh, and then you can use this red water and just put it into the freezer you calculate how many mushrooms you put it in and you can more or less know the amount the uh, other aspect uh, the other aspect what you can do uh, it's uh, you can dry them and when you're drying them uh, then you can uh, get a lot more benefits benefits uh, from uh, oh. uh, benefits uh, uh, because when you have the dried mushroom you have all of the elements and the structures inside of it so of course if you use the physical mushroom and you eat it it will have a lot more potence it will give all of the healing elements more rather than you would just uh, drink the water or make tinchikar. Some people do tinchikar with alcohol. Um, it is possible, but the effectiveness is a lot less. Uh, so, for, and for that reason, I highly just recommend people to have their own stash of Amanita muscaria. Once you want to microdose, you just take how much you need, you can break it, or you can make powder for yourself. And that's it. That's the most simple way. There's no meaning in making all of this complex teas and freezing it and etc. Because once you make this tea and you freeze it, it already starts to lose its healing, let's say, components. So well, keep it simple. We will always bring a lot higher results. And uh, Amanita by itself, it knows what we need. And that's it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Thank you for the question. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. I wanted to specify uh -huh. because you say it's a stem. Yeah. How do I how do I know how much is a stem? Uh, I usually eat two three stamps. Even as if. A, as a microdose. Uh, okay. Imagine like this: that the stamp has only twenty percent of the components that has the cap. This is about how you can calculate. But when I'm going and gathering fresh ones, I really don't care. Like, uh, I don't focus on microdosing or that and this, it's just, you know, I see, I feel, it's like, hey, well, lovely, I'm so happy, let's connect, baby. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yes, and it, and it tastes really good. Uh, no, well, well, what would, uh, sometimes we do, we just gather them. For example, um, we gathered uh, like more than 20 kilos so in Switzerland of Amanitas. And then uh, part of them we dried, but the stems uh, we just fried them and cooked them, and ate it together with the food, and the effect was really good. <laughs> we were quite amazed how tasty and how effective <laughs> it was. Use them for drying as yeah, you can. Uh, it's also possible, but usually we just cook them fresh, and it's totally fine. And, uh, you can dry them and then use them, just knowing twenty percent of them has the component of the cap. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. Uh, do you have any experience in um, combining microdosing of amanita and, uh, for example, healing journeys with MDMA? Mm -hmm. uh, amanita muscaria, it can be connected with almost any substance. Would it be a nature substance or a chemical substance? It will just provide you the opportunity of having more control over that journey that you're going through. So you, for example, take the, uh, let's say, um, Amanita Muscaria microdosing, then you take, for example, an LSD or an MDMA, and you will be in a lot higher control. You know, it's like uh, kind of in the same that you can, like, uh, uh, MDMA and LSD don't have a spirit. So when you're using Amanita Muscaria, actually through it, you can ask the spirit of Amanita Muscaria to help you to be guided through this LSD or MDME journey. And it will guide you. I'm, I'm not so sure, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it spirit maybe, but I would call it like an energy field, mm -hmm. uh, which I can enter, or which I enter before I even start the ceremony mm -hmm. uh, with a substance like MDMA. I 
which I recently entered without even taking the substance, just by praying and just by asking for guidance. Mm -hmm. So I would say there's maybe not a spirit, but the medicine has an energy field, at least in my perception around mm -hmm. uh, around it, which I which I can can work with. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would not fully agree with. I mean, maybe the, the term of spirit, yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. the, the plant medicine has, but the other medicines for me at least have the energy and field, which is for sure. very uh, tangible for me, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can work with this energy field. And that is wonderful, of course, we can work with any type of energy, but working with exactly this type of energy, you have to work, like, you have to really, to ask, to program, to like, say how it will be, uh, and to focus it mm -hmm. and with uh, plant medicines it's more smoother mm -hmm. like uh, there you don't need so much programming there you don't need like s such a deep essential work and uh, MDMA yeah it's a wonderful uh, also tool uh, but at the same time my always inspired people uh, well when I was working especially in Goa and healing a lot of people I saw which type of medicines you know, like guide people to wear if you're doing uh, like a single or two times or three times in a conscious way, it's good. But if the person becomes it like a habit, then uh, for sure the chemical ones, they just, uh, they give a boost of energy and then afterwards they make a deep hole. And while the people are in the hole of this energetic, uh, uh, they lose their time. So eventually I saw a lot by people who were some were sitting on pharmaceutical drugs, uh, some were sitting like on MDMA, some were sitting on other pills, uh, and eventually all of these people, what they had all in common is uh, that they had different kind of accidents and incidents with them happening. They couldn't understand why, but they always had something happening to them. They had a car accident uh, or some kind of problem happened there or something there. And eventually uh, what I noticed that when people are using um, well, let's say on a constant this type of medicine then uh, the person doesn't notice himself how he has an energetic hole in the next day but the people around him or her know that <laughs> for sure you will just see how around this person all of the problems are happening he doesn't hear you he does something or she's stupid or like uh, she doesn't notice the most obvious things so as a result, the person who is working with this type of medicine, he often becomes a problem for the people who spend time with him or her. If, if I use this medicine as you, you, you had before this um, picture of a crutch, right? Mm -hmm. So if I use any kind of medicine as a crutch and I'm depending on it, then it becomes a huge problem, or it is already a huge mm -hmm. problem, right? If, if I use it for healing and once in a while, and maybe there is a gap of two years, and maybe then it's just half a year. That's uh, true it's, healing. It's for me a, a different uh, type of a story because then it's not a crutch, then it's just something I, I, uh, I, I partner up with mm -hmm. to find a solution for something, and then I can keep on doing it and uh, I, I carry on, you know, without it. Mm -hmm. uh, without yeah, without you're it. approaching it in a spiritual, very conscious, respectful way. That's the way how people should do it. I fully support such an attitude and support. And uh, I think it's uh, crucial to explain the people exactly what you share when they're starting to use such type of substances. Because people who start, uh, let's say, to use chemistry, you really have to take care of them. You know, like you really need to explain them. You have to like look so they won't get addicted. You have to teach them on how to take care of their energy level. and blah 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 like and etc uh with medicine plants i'm so much more relaxed like you know i can just give a manita <laughs> and say okay do this in the morning in the evening ask uh, your prayer do the diary that's it and i'm sure the person will get there where he has to be with uh, chemical substances i cannot do that because i know i have to then take the person by the hand and to walk with him all of this path that's why in my work, um, I almost never use chemical drugs. Uh, but this is uh, just my approach because I just worked with so many people who were under different uh, chemical medicines, how, how they call it. 
Uh, but MDMA sessions correctly organized are unbelievably healing, but professionally organized. Not that people would just like take it and then be by themselves, but they need structure and guidance and understanding before they do it. And then it truly can make also wonders happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, I have a question yes. uh, about uh, your partner, the mycologist, the mm -hmm. Russian mycologist. So he researched Jamalita for many, many years. What, what uh, is he found, like the biggest finding? Oh, the, this is, I think, a question that uh, it's best of all to ask him because I never formulated, um, uh, never ask him in such a formulation. But uh, I would say uh, the most uh, uh, interesting, I would say, thing is just the true practical powers of Amanita. It's not even in the chemistry, but it's in the powers that Amanita provides a human. Uh, many people uh, use Amanita to find like their answers and etc. But if it's needed, you can ask Amanita to help you to create physical changes in your reality. Oh, just an example. Uh, when, uh, oh, okay. Uh, for example, when uh, uh, the war started uh, in Ukraine, then afterwards they did like mobilization. Mobilization for all of men in Russia means that uh, you're the meat that we're gonna kill on the field. So all of the conscious men, of course, started to leave the country. And um, uh, uh, I have a friend together with his wife and small uh, child uh, were staying in India and they came just for the first time, like in three years to Russia and just this moment, the mobilization <laughs> starts. This means mobilization. mobilization means that they're taking away all of the men to ah, serve in the fun. army. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't have an option if you served you will be taken away and they will just send you there and nobody cares what you say if you say no you're a traitor and you can be sent to prison uh, so uh, uh, and it was uh, uh, I still have uh, somewhere on my phone uh, like pictures that the friend together with his family they were also microdosing and just asked for money to like to help them to get out in a smooth way and it was just uh, epic uh, how they traveled to the border. Then eventually they had an electric scooter. He had the, the child with the, everything there. They, they were driving the electric scooter uh, up to the border. And then at the border they had to leave it and they crossed it and they found a bicycle and they found, you know, it was like a whole adventure. But the aspect is that it went so fast that within like uh, less than one day they got out where some people got stuck for weeks. Or oh, I had a situation with uh, my project, uh, I remember in Goa, it's like a healing center, which turned out to be like, oh, I don't know how to call it. Let's just say it became a very complex project, more as a mental hospital rather than a healing center. And uh, I really didn't want to be the main uh, psychiatrist and uh, healer of the whole mental sick people of Goa. Uh, but at the same time, it was my project where I invested time, energy and money into a specific property and etc. And I was very hooked up. You know, when you like, for example, you develop Orion and then you just uh, at one point understand that it's really nothing what you wanted, but you already invested so much time and energy that you don't even know what to do. Because it's your creation, but you are totally... So, and I remember one point that I had enough and it happened at one o'clock of the night. It was just, you know, the final drop. And I'm like, that's it. You know, I have to find a solution. I have no idea what to do. So I took a manita, I went to the jungles uh, and at night I did my ceremony with myself. I think I ate like 15 or 20 grams or maybe more. The journey was uh, quite dynamic. In some moments it was rough, but it, uh, it went uh, uh, for the physical body rough, but I didn't feel it. You know, it was just a cleansing process. And in the morning when I uh, got up, it was like 7, 8 a.m. I went for a swim in the jungle and uh, went to the ocean. And when I was driving back home, I really felt like that's it. Like I had it clear to myself. I'm closing this project for myself and I'm leaving. Like, I don't care. Like this is all now under your own responsibility. I have a different path. This is uh, not my karma. This is not my shit. You deal with your problems by yourself. 
and was driving home, imagine how surprised and shocked I was that the moment I approach like the hotel, I see that my things are already prepared. They're standing at my door. You understand? They're just like, everything is prepared. They're just at my door. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, man, this, like, is it really like so fast? And then, uh, and then I see a message from my friend. He also lives in uh, India, but he's from Estonia. And he shared that together with his girlfriend, they found a new house, which is located just like 300 meters away, but in the jungle, like in the field, beautiful with like, peacocks, cows, like mangoes, and they're leaving their place and they're right now driving to the new house. And it says like, if you want, like stay by us. And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I literally just take my things. I just like go out, put, and I just drive out. And you know, just already in two hours, I'm just, uh, you know, like I met the friend that he came and we come to this house. And you know, I'm, I even have the goosebumps. Because the moment I approach the house from the background, there are three big candle lights. No, like uh, lights. One, two, three. Three amanitas. <laughs> Just three light amanitas. Just like, boom. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> yes. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, how did it all happen? Like. Yesterday I had all of these problems, all of this responsibility, all of this. And here I'm finally in peace. I don't have this stupid responsibility. I can just sleep. <laughs> I can just enjoy. <laughs> and not even 24 hours have passed by. So this is another just small story on how Amanita can help you to solve things, even though that in your mind you think that you don't know how to solve it. The solution, it's always simple. And by asking help, you will always get the guidance and the support. Most important that you would then listen and follow what you're given and that you wouldn't hold to the old, but you would focus on that what is ahead, which would be for you even more inspiring, more enjoyable. And then life becomes simple. If something played out, just let it go. Focus on something what would bring you even more joy. And then you don't want to look back. You will just focus on the point B where you want to be. So the most important thing for effective work, find for yourself those goals, those aims, that inspirational reality which your soul really wants to live in. And then the soul sends energy, Amanita guides you and supports you and uh, everything works like magic. And you can achieve really big things and big changes um, if you ask them and you're ready for them. So I hope this story has got, gave uh, even practical insights about the powers. Oh yes, and I really like uh, Gunter. Could you share your story in two words with the travel outside the border? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just wanna share this. We had to, we had to make a visa run and uh, we were really like uh, terrified or like yeah to being like in the morning get up very early go on a boat sit in a car for four and a half hours be in the border do not know if i can come back inside so there's always this thing sit again four hours four and a half hours in a, in a, in a car not to know if we get the boat back in the night time and then have the boat in the night time back here so and it was the second day when we took amanita and microdosing and you know, my wife were both like really scared of how this trip would go because it was very first time for us and we heard all these horror stories and so we just thought like okay so Vadim told us you can ask Amanita for everything and we just asked for Amanita please guide us in beauty and harmony and tomorrow not just let us go through this border run please give us make it make it really smooth and so we didn't realize it during the day but uh, so we made this border run and in the evening time we came back and uh, we both looked at each other and felt like both wow there was a it felt like a spa day uh, really like like really have a massage and everything and we didn't have a massage but we had the border run but it felt like really it was so smooth everything yeah it was just beautiful like mm -hmm. because we asked for and uh, yeah mm -hmm. so this is a wonderful example of that if you ask it will be given to you, but you need to ask. 
If you don't ask, nobody can give you a hand of help because it's breaking your natural borders of development. So ask and it will be given. Mm -hmm. So simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quick uh, practical question here. Um, I've been storing only then the fridge. Mm -hmm. Is that better or would you say better have in the room even if the room is hot? Uh, in truth, it's not a big deal uh, if it's opened, um, you know, like some packages, I keep it in the fridge. Sometimes when it's nicely sealed, I just put it, in, uh, let's say, uh, in the room. Uh, it's very, I would say, it's more important to pay attention that the sun wouldn't have the impact rather than uh, do you keep it in the fridge uh, or in a dry place. Most important that there will be no sunlight hitting it. Uh, in the rest, it doesn't matter. Just close it and you can keep it as in the room temperature as in the uh, yeah, fridge. Okay. Well, uh, I would say, uh, oh, okay. Final question. Yeah, just where do I get it to start? <laughs> sure. So, um, um, uh, I took with me, yes, you're welcome, you're welcome. So, uh, I took with me a, uh, a little bit, um, uh, like 20 grams of microdosing, if somebody will need, it's like for one month uh, enough, 20 grams is that, let's say, optimal size. Uh, and then, yeah, eventually just uh, start to lead the diary, formulate your request, and the big request for the whole cycle of microdosing and then every day just write small questions which guide you with the next next step uh, and also uh, most probably no, I'm right now opening um, uh, to take new people to Amanita Muscaira diary course which will start like in I assume or next Sunday or in one Sunday uh, so for, it will be a course which will last for two months that where we have like on this uh, past cycle we had like 20 participants from eight countries starting from uh, like Australia there was also from Israel there was uh, many Europeans there was from Austria from Germany from Switzerland Britain Ireland US so it's like international and uh, uh, so the course happens that we meet twice a week it's like Wednesdays, it's like question and answer sessions. And then on Sundays, we have a lecture where I give specific tools on how to work with Amanita, how to work with yourself, on what to focus and what you can do to get, well, let's say higher results. So if, uh, if anybody now feels that he wants to go in a collective form through his change in Amanita, this is a, a very good, I would say, course to join in. And I, uh, for now, as I see, this will be my final course about the Manita Muscaria diary, which I will guide. As afterwards, it will be only in recording, as I'm gonna just upload it and provide people opportunity just to, to watch it. So if, uh, if somebody uh, wants um, uh, to, let's say, join up, the, just uh, approach me after the session and I can share details. Um, in the rest, I think um, many things were shared. Did you get today the insights and the information that your soul uh, wanted to hear? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm happy that um, you got what you asked for. And the same with Amanita. Just continue asking and continue listening to the answers. And once you hear the answer, don't analyze it. Do it. <laughs> Just do it and get the result. As everybody wants to see you happy. You understand? Mm -hmm. You want to see you happy. Amanita wants to see you happy. I want to see you happy. <laughs> so just focus on your soul and your happiness. And it will always guide you to the truth, which you have inside of you. Thank you. <laughs>